Hello everyone, John Bloodworth Gentleman Crafter here. In this video I'm going to be taking this faux leather, this printed faux leather, and using it in conjunction with the scan and cut machine to create earrings. It's a, an idea that's been around for a while, but I've been researching different types of fabrics to use with this particular project. Here are a couple of examples of things that I made whilst creating this video. OK, back to today's project and just to point out, I'm using the installed version of Canvas Workspace. However, this should also be achievable in the online version if you prefer to use that. The first thing that I'm going to do is drag on a circle. And I'm going to change the size of that to be 5 millimeters. That's going to be my standard hole size for creating hanging loops in any of the earrings that I make in this video. Next, I'm dragging on another circle and making that 25 millimeters. That's just one inch. Then I'm zooming in to both and aligning them um, so that they touch at the top. I'm going to drag the smaller circle up in the layers palette so that it sits on top and then I'm using the arrow keys on my keyboard to move it down. I'm applying some fill color so that I can see what I'm doing on screen and which shape is which. It's not strictly a necessary step though. After selecting both shapes, I use the Control G shortcut to group them, and you can see that that's now changed to a group in the Layers palette. And then I will use the right click menu to duplicate those. You could, of course, use the Control C, Control V shortcuts for copy and paste. I'll group those before moving on to the next um, version. For the next one, it's very similar to the circular earring drops, but this time I'm using this sort of um, very soft scallop shape. Same size is used again, 25 millimeters for the larger shape and five millimeters for the bottom shape. Now do remember I do go quite quickly in my YouTube videos but if you need any help with the basic functions or using any of this software please remember to check out my Udemy course uh, which covers everything from beginning to end in operating your scan and cut machines and also Canvas Workspace. I will leave a link to that in the description below this video. OK, so I've just duplicated that, grouped it, and then I'll move that pair off to one side. I had originally intended to cut all of these out, so I'm just fiddling around with the positioning. It's not an essential step at all. OK, time for another one. This time I think I'll go much further down in the shapes library and try something um, non-standard. So this clamshell might work quite well. Um, but I'm going to make a couple of changes. First, I will change the width to 25 millimeters, and I've made sure the aspect ratio lock stays the same, or stays on, so that the height is changed as well. And then I'm going to copy and paste it, turn it 180 degrees, and then weld it with the first shape. The 
The goal with this one is that I would feed it through a looped piece of wire, fold it over and stick the backs together. Now I didn't actually get around to um, making an example of this or making a finished example of this because I wanted to try and keep this video as short as possible. Um, but generally I'm trying to give you as many ideas here of how to create the earrings and then hopefully you'll have some fun um, creating them yourself. I've just brought this square on as five millimeters just to get an idea of the width and the scale that I'm dealing with um, with this shape. So after aligning I weld this one doesn't need a hanging loop because it will form the hanging loop from its own body. To create the pair, just copy and paste. Okay, there we go, there's another one, another set. so we're doing another one now with a leaf pattern this time I'll change the height rather than the width no I won't I'll change the width to 25 millimeters and that will automatically adjust the height because the aspect ratio lock is on I'll grab another circle and again change it to five millimeters to be my hanging loop I will align that so the hanging loop is in the middle and then again just using the arrow keys on my keyboard to nudge that down about 10 presses of that key um, and that should give me enough space for the hanging loop to be there but not to have too much fabric above the hanging loop. <coughs> you can obviously experiment and find um, what works for you either visually or um, in terms of construction. So just completing the pair there by copying and pasting. I'll group them and then move those along. You can see how quickly you can form lots of different styles of earrings. So in the layers panel there you can see all of those different shapes coming together in their groups. And for the next one, I'll get this rounded teardrop shape. Again, the width to 25 millimeters. Seems to be a good size for earrings. Obviously, if you love your Pat Butcher earrings, you could do this whatever size you want. And for anyone not in the UK, she is a character from the soap opera EastEnders who wears gigantic, gaudy earrings. I have copied and pasted that shape and reduced the width to 20 millimeters and then a third copy reduced to 15 millimeters. And this is gonna form one of the pairs of earrings that you saw at the start of the video. Now to get the hanging loop in the same place on all of them, I'm gonna do a little cheat. I'm gonna create one hanging loop get it into position and then I'm going to copy uh, and paste it along with each of the other layers. So you'll see me here. First I'll select the circle and the smallest teardrop and I'll copy and paste that. Mm. 
then the circle and the second teardrop, copy and paste. Oops, and then the circle and the largest teardrop, copy and paste. So rather than mess about getting all sorts, all three hanging loops in there, just having the one meant that I could make sure it was in exactly the same position for each layer. Now I'll select the three teardrop shapes and give them a color. Again, this is just for identification. There's no actual changes happening to the design. Now I'll group each hanging circle or hanging loop with each of the teardrop layers and then just arrange them on the mat. If you've got an all over pattern, a multi-directional pattern, flipping and rotating like this can also save space and save money because you won't be using as much of your sheet when you come to cut them out. If you have any questions while I'm working or when you've come to the end of this video, please remember you can leave them in the comments section on my blog where this video has been posted or of course in the comments section under the video on YouTube. I do go fast in these particular videos on YouTube, but remember if you want any individual guidance and support, please do go and check out my course on Udemy. I literally cover things step by step with all the keyboard shortcuts and things like that so you're not left behind. Of course if you'd rather stay here on YouTube please remember that you have the pause and rewind rewatch buttons available to you. Okay, so I've got all my shapes there. I'm gonna save it as a project so that I can come back into Canvas Workspace again in the future. And of course, when I'm ready to export or transfer the file, I can use that option from the file menu and then my preferred method, which is Wi-Fi. If you don't have Wi-Fi, transfer it via USB with the first option. If you've got a sheet like this with lots and lots of earring designs on, you can of course stack them on top of each other, but by hiding and locking layers, you can prevent them being transferred when you come to export the design. So I'll show you that now. So at the moment I've got five groups on the mat and if I left them all visible and unlocked, they will all be transferred. Whereas if, as I've just done here, I've locked all of the layers and hidden all of the layers that I didn't want to transfer, then only the objects that I have visible and unlocked will be transferred. And that's what that warning message is about. Again, you just choose whichever method of transfer you prefer. And of course you can unlock and unhide the layers again when you come back to see them in the future. Now just before I finish up, if you'd like to do like a tiered um, earring where you've got more than one object with, um, what am I trying to describe? A waterfall, a cascade, I don't know. You'll see what I mean when I've done it. So first up, I've just copied and pasted the round earring objects. I've got rid of one and kept one. Duplicating that. And then I'm gonna duplicate it again. I'm gonna align the first and third copies vertically on both the horizontal and vertical axis. Then I'll select the top one, rotate it, ungroup it and get rid of the larger shape. Now I'm left with the first circle and the two hanging loops which I'll group together. Copy and paste that and then you've got the two shapes that'll be at the top of the earring and then the shape with one hanging loop will be at the bottom. Of 
group those, make the second copy for the second earring and then of course you can transfer that and cut it out. When you've got the um, shapes cut out you can obviously use eyelets different types of ear wires and split rings to assemble your earrings.